number 9 then from the 2014 Advanced Hire McLaurin series. Now, it starts off with give the first three terms for two marks of this cost 3x and then just write down the first four terms for just one mark. Well, that certainly seems to imply you're expected to know e to the x and you should know e to the x because it's a particularly simple one. e to the x is just 1 plus x over 1 factorial, which you don't need to write down, plus x squared over 2 factorial, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. But, if you remember that, you also know sine and cos, because the sine and the cos use the alternating terms. The cosine use the odd terms, that'll be the cosine, strictly speaking, it's actually the hyperbolic cosine that uses the odd terms or the positives. The cosine uses alternating, I'll put a wee sign for that, alternating signs. You also know cos x and sin x from those terms you didn't use. I'll put plus or minus sin x because again, using the positives, that would be the hyperbolic sign, signs. Still, you don't do that part. Which means you could state this just from remembering e to the x. Now, would you get your two marks if you just write that down? I'll put it down that way, first of all. Cos to the 3x from remembering e to the x would be the cosine starts with the first term. You can remember that easily because cosine starts at 1. That would be 1 plus, the next term should be, it's alternating, minus x squared, but that x is a 3x squared over 2 factorial. Then plus, the next term would be the power 4 term, so putting 3x in place of the x to the power 4 over 4 factorial. And then it would be minus and so on, but it only wants the first three terms. So that's going to be 1 minus, and that'll be 9 upon 2x squared, plus 3 to the power 4 over 4 factorial. Well, the 4 factorial's got a 3 in it, which could knock out one of those three, making that a 27. And with the 3 gone, you're just left with 4 twos or 8 to the power 4 for the first three terms. But you may have set it all out using the expansion for the Maclaurin series, which is the nth derivative evaluated at 0 to produce the x to the n term over n factorial, which is this, going from n equals 0 to infinity. So it means you work out the various derivatives. You start off with cos 3x and work it out at 0. So cos 3x at 0 would be 1. Then the derivative is negative 3 sine 3x, but that evaluated at 0 is just 0. Then it would become differentiated again, whoops, 9 cos 3x. So it would be negative 9. We've only got two terms so far. Differentiate it again. 27 sine 3x, but at 0, that's 0. Differentiate it again. Another 3 multiplying it, 81 cos 3x, which then gives 81. And then you put it all together. Of course, I should have been putting this down at the side here, shouldn't I, if you were doing it that way. So that's f of x, that's f dashed x, that's f, I'll just put a 2 in this time, that's the third derivative, that's the fourth derivative, which means that using the Maclaurin expansion, it would be, I've got the first one for the power of zeros, or for the zeros in it, so that would be, if you like, 1 times x to the 0 over 0 factorial, plus the next one's a negative 9 times, and that was the second one, so over 2 factorial, and the third one was an 81, and that was the fourth one, so x to the 4 over 4 factorial, which is obviously the same thing as that. So when it then says just write down the first four terms of e to the 2x, well, it's the same thing here. That will be 1 plus, but instead of x, I'm putting a 2x plus. Instead of x, I'm putting a 2x, but that will be squared divided by 2 factorial plus 2x cubed over 3 factorial. So tidying that lot up, it will be 1 plus 2x plus... <coughs> And then that will take out one of those, leaving a 2x squared, because there's 2 to the power 2, but a 2 underneath, plus, and then for the last one, for the x cubed, that will be, well, the 2 in the factorial can knock out one of those 2s, so that will make that a 4 upon 3 for the first three, four terms. Hmm. 
third part says then, hence or otherwise determine the Maclaurin series for a to the 2x cos 3x. Well, those are the two parts of it, so I'll just be the product of them. So I'll just be multiply them together. e to the 2x is 1 plus 2x plus 2x squared plus 4 upon 3x cubed. Cos 3x, 1 minus 9 upon 2x squared plus 27. Well, in fact, that term's redundant, isn't it? Because it says as far as the term in x to the 3. Now, that term could never be used unless I had a term in x to the negative 1 here. So I just need to go as far as that then for the first three terms. And then I can put plus dot dot for all any remaining terms. So then it's actually better multiplying the other way out. So I've got all of them will have powers up to 3, but only some of those multiplied by x squared will. So 1 times all of them. I'll have all of those terms, but I'll only have the ones in these that take me up to x cubed. So I'll have this one, this product here, so minus 9 upon 2x squared. I'll have this product here, which is minus 9x cubed, but I don't want x to the 4 and x to the 5, so that's all I would have. So it's just a case of writing that out then. I've got 1 plus 2x. Now there's some x squares here. That's 4 upon 2. Take away 9 upon 2. That's minus 5 upon 2. And I've got some x cubes here. And that's minus 27 upon 3. 4 minus 27 is minus 23 upon 3 x cubed. I'll put the little plus dot dot dot. But they're asking for the terms up to x cubed. So, there we go then.